was the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe our Rebbe. We always had a Rebbe. There was, there's a mind-blowing verse in the Bible itself. Every good Christian and some Jews will know this sentence in the Bible. There it says, Moses is telling his people, the Hebrews, what his function is, what his job is. Now this Pusik, when I first saw it, I thought, no, it's gotta be some propaganda or chauvinism of the Hasidic movement. I can't really be a, a verse in Deuteronomy. And there it says, Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu tells the Jewish people, Anoichi Oimed, I'm standing, Beinechem, between you, Levein Hashem Elokeichem, and between the Lord your God, to do what? Lahagid Lachem, as Devar Hashem, to tell you the word of God. What do you need him for? Read the book. But the book can be interpreted many ways. The second most important school of Kabbalah is the Ariza, Lurianic Kabbalah. And Rabbi Luria only lived to be 38 years old when he went to heaven, and but founded the this, this second most important school or teachings of Kabbalah. So he said there's 600,000 meanings to each sentence in the Bible. But generally we can divide it into two, the revealed Torah and the hidden Torah. Revealed Torah, everybody can read. The hidden Torah, there needs to be some preconditions, prerequisites. You should be married, you should be at least a minimum of 40 years old. You should be a, an unbelievable prolific scholar of the revealed Torah of the Bible, the Mishnah, the Gemara. And then finally, you can understand what the, the Moses of our generation is saying. So the idea behind that sort of thing is if you have a real life tzaddik, then it connects us to one of the 613 commandments in the Torah that most people don't really talk about. We know about the commandment of putting on tefillin, we know about the commandment of the different 613 commandments, but there's a commandment which is two words in the Torah. And the two words are ubo, and in him, meaning Moses, or the tzaddik of the time, tid bakun. Any Israeli say, you know what the modern Israeli word devek means? Good, there's a good group right in here, okay, good. Glue, so one of the commandments in the Torah is ubo tid bakun, glue yourself to the Moses of the generation. It doesn't matter who it is, your Moses, the one that you respect, the one that, you, that understands you. All the princes of the 12 tribes had psychic ability to understand any member of their tribe. Only one person had the psychic ability, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit to understand all the tribes. And that was Moshe Rabbeinu. People came by and he told them what their past lives were, like the Arizal, etc., that sort of thing. So we know how to put on tefillin, we know how to dwell in the sukkah, we know how to wear tzitzit in it. How do you glue yourself to God? The uh, Talmud comments on, this ver on these verses in the, in, the, in the Torah. I'm just filibustering while they uh, set up, so uh, I got another two and a half minutes, they told me. So, uh, yeah, you still got to set up, okay. Are these union work guys? I mean, uh, who'd you bring in here to set up here? Okay, I'm just kidding. Okay, God bless. Yeah. Okay, so all the mitzvahs, we have a shulchan aruch, a code of Jewish law that says how to do it, what are the minimum requirements, how many ounces of matzah do you have to stuff down your throat to make, that you make sure you did that commandment in the Bible, that people have all kinds of measuring sticks and rods and all kinds of, but... Uh, so how do you fulfill the commandment of gluing yourself to God? The Gemara says that one of the ways to glue yourself to God is to read the Torah of the Tzaddik, his, his commentary, his explanation of these verses in, in, the, in the Torah. So that's essential and important. If you want to, if you're a 613 or you want to do a, some of the commandments in the Torah, not the rabbinical, but the actual biblical commands, 
that came from Hashem. So we know how to do all the commandments, including gluing yourself to Hashem. So there it says to read his Torah. There was a Russian Jew when there still was communism, a strong, and the Jews weren't allowed to leave Russia for 70 years of communism. So a guy smuggled out a letter and said, I became a Baal Tshuva, and Rebbe, Lubavitcher Rebbe, I'm reading your Torahs and your explanations of Rashi and, and all the Torah that you've written, and, uh, but I never saw you personally, live, face to face, and I don't have that experience. I want to be connected to you. I want to glue myself to the Moses of our generation, whom I think is you. How do I do that? And the Rebbe answered him through a smuggled letter, read my Torah, because that's coming from my soul, the highest level. And then I, for 20 summers, Olivia and I were privileged to go every summer to be the so-called scholars in residence at the Institute of Kabbalah and Ascent in one of the four holy cities of Israel, Tzfat. And uh, so there, it was uh, very powerful to see a real live tzaddik, not only there, anywhere, that did stuff. Some people need a miracle. Some people need a kunz, a trick. And some people can relate soul to soul. So there is a thing about carpeting the grave of a tzaddik, the tomb of a tzaddik. What do you call orthodox sightseeing in Israel? Grave hopping. <laughs> right? I mean, that's what people do who know who these people were, who these scholars, these mystics, what kind of light they brought into the world. So, uh, but there's one sentence that rings very, very loud and true. When you read out loud the words of the Torah, of the explanation of a tzaddik, the lips of that tzaddik, a thousand or how many centuries since he's passed away, are moving in his grave saying the same words that you're saying. That's another way to glue yourself to the tzaddik. So I, uh, the Hebra from the Moshe have been, so they're the closest. They were born there, they grew up there, next door to the tzaddik, to Rabbi Shlomo Kabach, who gave the world so much light. And there was only one in a generation, and that was him. And uh, I just, last, this week, saw Rabbi Shlomo Krabach say the eulogy for the late Labamacher Rebbe, and he ended with, the words, there was never a Rebbe like the late Labamacher Rebbe. This is what I saw in the video, and there never again will be one like him. Knowing that, we can still connect and glue ourselves to Pick a tzaddik. So a good tzaddik, everybody should have great success in picking a tzaddik to connect to and glue yourself to. Shavuot Tov.